Welcome to the Stop Mental Health Stigma Roundtables, proudly presented by the STAR program, a project generously funded by the New York State Office of Mental Health. Good afternoon. My name is Michelle Melendez. I'm the Behavioral Health Director of the STAR Health Center here at SUNY Downstate. Thank you to the Theo team that is here today that are here to address uh, mental health stigma among youth. This opportunity was made possible through a grant from the Office of Mental Health to address mental health stigma in New York City. I'm going to begin asking a few questions around mental health stigma. I would like to first ask if you could define what mental health stigma is to you. Um, I, I believe mental health stigma is a misconception and negative ideas that surround mental health. I'll let down to three and say I think mental health stigma about the negative I think it's an overall bias um, towards mental health and a lack of understanding as well. Um, and because of those things, sometimes it leads to these negative connotations and the frequency notions that we typically have when it comes to mental health. What do you think are some of the effects of that stigma against mental illness and how does it present itself in our culture and society? Um, I would say that we see a lot of effects in our day-to-day -day life. We see a lot of people who are, aren't able to actually go out and you know, seek the um, help that they, you think they would need because they're embarrassed, they're ashamed of the fact that they have mental health issues. Mm -hmm. And anxiety is being at a heightened state for young people. I think societally, um, the more that there is stigma, the more, well, the less likely that young people are to go and seek out help, whether that be from a teacher, a counselor, or even telling your parents or any grown up in your life that, hey, I might need some, some help. I struggling internally. Have what do you think are some of the internalized messages that someone may have that? would lead them to hesitate to admit that they're struggling or need help? Um, so, I'm Haitian. Mental health isn't talked about. You're mm. depressed? No, you're not. Mm. You're sad? No, it's just a bad day. Mm. So, a lot of the times as teens, we internalize that to just be, it's just a bad day, not a bad life. Mm. Sometimes we don't understand that bad days can accumulate and that when that happens and you're a teen who doesn't voice the fact that these bad days are accumulating, it could turn into something worse. So I think that because of all the shutdowns sometimes from parents and teachers, that it could be just a day in the wind, hmm. sometimes causes them to not want to speak up on it because they think it's insignificant. Right, right. So it sounds like the, the hesitation could be about maybe people won't understand. Mm -hmm right or maybe i should just suck it up right yeah. you're just having a bad day move on yeah, so the new phrase is mm. it be like that mm. that's the new phrase you use right. it be like that mm. so that that's pretty powerful because if it be like that means i'm having trouble eating right either i have no appetite i'm eating too much i can't sleep or i'm sleeping too much or i'm having thoughts of harming myself really it be like that that's how life is Right. That could instill a sense of, oh man, if this is how life is, I have no hope. Yep. Right. Very dangerous. Yeah. As mm -hmm. like a Muslim person and an Arabic person, I can tell you that one thing that we have in our culture is um you're possessed or mm -hmm. you're feeling this way because you're not you're not close to God. Mm -hmm. So it's like I know that a lot of people will probably be like, it's my fault that I feel in this way, so why am I gonna go out there and actually ask for help and talk to somebody about it when I should try to fix it from within myself. As a young yeah. person, how can you recognize when one of your own friends is struggling with a mental health issue? So what are some of the sides? Skipping meals, mm -hmm. uh, sleeping in a mm -hmm. lot, uh, kind of distancing yourself from mm -hmm. your friends. Mm -hmm. Those are pretty big signs, especially with our generation. We're so connected, we're so much on social mm. media. It, um, it's very easy to tell when someone is deceiving mm -hmm. themselves. Sure. So that would be one big sign. Uh huh. So withdrawing, especially if you're someone who's generally talkative and likes to be with people, and then all of a sudden you're stepping back, right? That could be pretty apparent that something's going on. Um, I would like to add maybe dark humor jokes because some jokes like there is some truth behind it. So like if they're like changing their personality and being aggressive, it's dark humor jokes, things like that. 
you know, just saying things like, hey, do you want some of my mm. um, objects? I'm giving away some of my valuables. I want you to have mm. it. Or things like, I really love you. You're such a good friend. Like, you know, just expressing these positive emotions that we normally associate with, like, you know, an increase in, well, a decline in mental health issues um, could actually really be an increase in mental health issues. Mm. So someone communicating in a way that they that you would find bizarre, right? Like someone, like the example you gave, giving away their items. That's not typical for people to do, right? So paying attention to that. I just think that if point. a person is your friend, um, regardless of the friend, whether it's an adult friend, a younger friend, pay attention to riffs. Um, in their behavior, any shift in it. So going ghost, if there's someone who actively likes to post and then one day they're deleting it, that could be something. If there's someone who talks a lot and then one day they go silent, that could be something. Um, it could also just be the fact that maybe they're completely okay and you can't tell and it's maybe the smallest random Tuesday that you missed that they didn't meet you at the bus stop in the morning. And that was the day that you somehow missed. So pay attention to any rift and the same way we think that it could be an insignificant bad day, don't let it think that she just missed the bus today. Check in. How you doing? Why did you miss the bus? I see you. Sometimes that little bit of communication is just what is needed to, you know, to be seen. Yeah, I'm glad you, um, you know, you brought up, because we've been talking about a lot about noticing the signs, right? But it also goes beyond that, right? Because I could notice, oh, she's not having lunch anymore. She used to have lunch, now she's not eating. She's missing the bus stop. This person's really irritable, but then what? Right, so you could be really good at noticing signs in a friend, but any thoughts about then how to reach out? What are some ways that you could reach out? Um, I would say definitely like just let you know, let your friend or peer know that you're there for them and that mm -hmm. you're gonna like sit there and listen. I would say it's also really important to learn how to set boundaries when reaching out to someone because you don't want to mm -hmm. be the person that they constantly rely on for everything, but mm -hmm. you also don't want them to like drift away from you and, you know, just like, you know, just disappear with their mental health issues. Like you want to be the one to lead them to go into therapy or go into group talks, whatever that could help them with their situation. Not being everything to that one person right because then it could also affect your mental health right, right? Mm -hmm. like, so yeah sometimes it's simple how are you how's your mm -hmm. day going i didn't see you today and honestly sometimes it really is just that quick good morning and smile and a familiar face that makes you feel a little bit better it doesn't have to be a super serious hey i know you've been going through things right but do you want to talk it could just be like let's grab lunch it's been a minute that's and right. that's just how friends do it and sometimes just that like and we always say that it's how you receive, it's how you come, it's how I receive you. Mm. So sometimes giving that open, friendly environment to mm. someone with just a quick, hey, what's up? It does not. And I really say this because I personally don't like when mm. people get really sentimental. You had a bad day. I saw you crying. Do you want a hug? It makes me cry more. Mm. So I personally prefer the person that likes to make jokes and say, well, forget mm. it. Let's go. And then mm -hmm. we'll talk about it later after I'm not feeling so emotional. And that right. helps me a lot. Sure. That's excellent. Great strategies. You know, you mentioned social media, right? It's no secret that social media is a big thing among you, right? <laughs> you mentioned like the patterns of sometimes or a potential like warning flag of if someone's always on social media and then all of a sudden they delete their accounts or they're just not answering anybody anymore. Um, so when we think about social media, how much does that have any effect on a young person's mental health? And if so, how? How does it affect mental health? I think most definitely because since we're on social media a lot, there's a lot of comparing going on with influencers and TikTok and all of that. So it, it causes teenagers or anyone kind of yeah. to like compare themselves to the new standards and things of that nature. So social media can be help can be used to help each other where people like mental health counselors make those videos online to help young people, or it can also be used to compare yourself or to take those messages in in a way where you are not happy with what you have, where you are aspiring for something else or you want something else. That could that could play a really big mental, a really big mental health. Right. So how do you balance? But what I see on social media, whether it's in pictures, images, 
um, versus like, you know, what's happening here in your real world? How do you balance that out so you don't get sucked into, you know, that, that what you were describing? Um, I would say just definitely learning how to be content with you know, what you mm. have and mm. what you look like. Because, mm. and I don't mean to say this to take away from anybody else's issue, but there's always worse issues out there. And just being able to recognize and be grateful that you're not in a situation um, like getting acid thrown on your face, which has happened mm. very recently in the subway station. Sure. Or, you know, being in war, um, just mm. being grateful for the fact that you're in the situation that you're in today. Mm. And realizing that, um, also just realizing that not everything you see online is real. Mm. That people really do put up a front with social media. Right, right. I love that. Being content with what you have, right? Sounds like gratitude, mm -hmm. right? Versus comparing. Awesome. Do you think that there are enough resources in the community where you live to address mental health um, concerns that young people may have? Yes, I think there are enough yeah. resources, um, but it's actually tying back to that social media bit. I don't think we're using our channels correctly. So instead of um, one thing that we're learning is access to healthcare, access to mental health, and knowing how to navigate the system. A lot of the problem that us as young people have is not knowing where to go, who to go to. And it could be someone as, not as simple, but someone as close to you as your guidance counselor at school. It doesn't have to be always a therapist that you go speak to or were referred to. Um, and we also use social media to promote our things. So why can't we use social media to promote mental health and well-being? Sure. There are also other types of social workers. If you have um, your pediatrician in hospitals, you can also ask if there's a social worker uh, at the clinic that you can speak to if you're comfortable at your pediatric office. Um, there's also teachers, there's parents. Um, there's other people in the community that I would say, so personally for me, I like to go to rec centers um, with my friends and I play basketball and you know, other things like that. So they also have um, people on site that can help you uh, with like if you have trouble at home if you have if you want someone to refer you like sexual health reproductive services things like that so honestly it could just be you asking a question hey do you know anybody that does this and right there it branches you off to different people Thank you so much to, to all of you um, here at Theo for your insight and your feedback. As we you know, heard today, mental health is so important for everyone, including our youth, and stigma affects everyone. Um, I encourage the viewers today to go on the StopTheStigma.com website and take the pledge. There's a lot of information about mental health. There's also a, a robust list of resources if anyone needs help or whether it be for yourself or for someone that you care about. And also I encourage everyone to take the Stop Mental Health Stigma Pledge that is on the website. Thank you.